One of the up and comers in the mechanical keyboard market is Durgod, which aren't hugely known, but I did see them at Computex, and they had some pretty impressive stuff, especially with their compact keyboards. So today we check out the Durgod Hades 68 RGB mechanical keyboard. Inside the box we have the keyboard itself, a wire keycap puller, there's two cables, a USB-C to USB-A, and then a USB-C to C. There's some cable straps and a Durgod sticker, and there was also a quick start guide. And straight away you feel that refreshing cold metal touch, so no flex with this guy at all, and being fully aluminium, it does pack some heft coming in at just above 800 grams. And that's really the main feature of the keyboard, I guess. Just having an aluminium case puts it in a different category compared to pretty much all the other pre-built retail 65% keyboards, which all have plastic cases. The design is very simplistic, the bezels are pretty slim with the top being thicker to accommodate the lock indicator LEDs, and it just gives it a bit more substance, which I like. But there's a considerable gap between the keycaps and the case, which is probably just to show off the RGB lighting a bit more. Personally, I prefer a proper high profile design for a cleaner look, but yeah, that's how it is. And yeah, it's just a very traditional design otherwise. No curves, just straight angular lines to give it some angle, so it'll fit into any setup. We have a bunch of rubber feet on the bottom, but no flip up feet, which is the norm for this sort of size and for aluminium boards and the metal info plate is a nice touch. One of the cutbacks that I've noticed is the finish. It isn't the best, you can see the machining marks all around the sides, it's not super noticeable with this black finish, it's just when the light hits it just right, but the case itself just doesn't exude quality in my opinion. Like it's totally fine, but just not as nice as other aluminium cases. And there's also this weird bit here that's raised slightly, and you'll see why a bit later in the video. Probably the weakest point of the keyboard for me are the keycaps. The font looks nice and clean, which I appreciate, but these are thin ABS caps that are laser etched, so the legends will fade over time, and they're much more susceptible to shine from your fingers. I have Cherry MX Silent Red key switches, so a light linear switch, meaning that it has no tactile bump or click, and is dampened. So paper thin keycaps aren't exactly the nicest thing to pair with them. Not the quietest silent switchboard out there, and the ping on this keyboard is pretty bad. You may not notice it when typing or with a louder key switch, but it's definitely noticeable with this configuration, especially with single hard presses. But at least it does have good stabilizers with minimal rattle that don't make the silent switch obsolete because they did lube the stabs. The really really cool thing about this keyboard though is that it comes with a solid range of key switch options, which is quite the coincidence after my last video. We have Cherry MX, Gatoron, and Kale Box. 
So yeah, that's awesome. From what I've seen, the Cherry MX versions are a tad more expensive, but yeah, I mean the Gatoron Blue is very similar to an MX Blue, and the Box White offers a different clicky experience, and then Gatoron Reds and Box Reds have the edge on MX Reds anyway. Anyway, back to the keyboard, this is of course a 65%, so it's like a 60% plus the dedicated arrow keys, which a lot of people love, and a few nav keys on the side. And all that additional primary functionality only adds one more column, so we still get the space saving and ergonomic benefits of a compact keyboard. And all the missing keys are accessible via the FN keys, so that includes the F1 to F12 on the number row, the rest of the nav keys are on the right side, and there's also some media controls. It's a very standard 65% layout in regards to keycap sizes. So it's just like the Tadar 68, which makes the keycaps nice and easy to replace, just like this. There's not a whole lot of variety with backlit keycaps, but I personally like the look of just having it as kind of underglow. And yeah, that brings up the Tadar 68 as a strong competitor. The Hades comes in at around 110 USD and higher depending on the key switch, while the aluminium Tadar starts at around 170 USD, so it's quite a big difference. But the Tadar Alu case is much nicer quality, finishes better, and it is heavier if that's your thing, and it does come with the awesome cherry profile keycaps which look amazing. But then the Hades has RGB backlighting, and 60 bucks is a lot of money but it seems proportional and you'd be happy with both depending on how much you want to spend. Let's take a quick look at their software which is available on their website. So there's four profiles, default, FN1, FN2, and then combined. And yeah, you can pick whatever key besides the FN keys and change them to whatever, including being able to move your FN keys somewhere else. We can also customize what our lock indicator LEDs show, which I don't think I've seen before, so that's pretty sweet. And then we have our macro recording section where we can record whatever with delays as well. Once you compile your profile or profiles, you can download them onto the keyboard so you don't need to have the software installed to be able to use what you've made. The keyboard is super easy to take apart with just a couple of Phillips head screws under some keycaps. Surprisingly, there's this dampening piece and that is a surprise because of the amount of ping this keyboard has. Usually something like that would improve how the keyboard sounds and feels, but honestly when I tried it with and without, the difference was negligible, and it is pretty difficult to compare without side-by-side -side comparisons. There's also this plastic piece at the bottom, and by this cutout you can tell that there probably were plans for dip switches, so that's why we have that weird bump on the case. And yeah, so nothing there on the PCB, there's the SMD RGB LEDs for each key switch, and yeah, looks fine. The plate is made from aluminium, which is pretty standard for aluminium cases, whereas most plastic boards have heavier steel plates. Alright, so overall, it's a metal 65% keyboard, great stabs with RGB backlighting and a solid piece of software, as well as coming in a variety of key switches which include Cherry MX, Gatoron, and Kale. And all of this at a very fair price of 110 USD and higher, depending on the switch. This puts it around the price range of the new incoming Ducky 2 SF. You get the better software and aluminium case with the Hades, but I still value typing experience and sound which I prefer on the Ducky, disregarding the key switches. Unfortunately the keycaps are pretty bad, thin ABS, laser etch just doesn't do it for me personally, and the whole fit and finish, you can tell that it's done on a budget. It just doesn't have the quality feel, but that's something I noticed because I've come across so much more, but for many this will be an amazing feeling keyboard, and finally the ping is quite bad, which does get to me. The other alternative that I mentioned before is the aluminium Tadar 68, but it's quite a bit more expensive, but the difference in quality is quite big. I think the price sets it up to be a very strong contender in the market, it has so much going for it at just over 100 USD, especially if you want an aluminium case. Thank you.